Hi everyone, this is HackConf 2021. I'm Krasi and this is the Visioner track with lectures. If you are a big hardware fan, then you are in the right hands. This is the right track for you. Our next speaker, Ivan Vasilev, is an engineering manager at Experian. For the past 20 years, he's been working with software, electronic and communications, and he's fascinated by, by everything that is technical and has a built-in process, uh, processor in it. Today, he's going to tell us what is RISC-V, why it is cool, and why we should start using it. Thank you. The stage is yours. Hello, everybody. My name is Ivan Vasilev, and I'll be talking RISC-V today. So, uh, moving straight to my objectives uh, for today, and uh, actually, who am I? Uh, the introduction was pretty good. I'm an engineer. I like to work with different technologies, different uh, electronic software, code, uh, mechanics, basically everything that is um, engineering related, I enjoy it a lot. You can see a picture of my typical desk and uh, my typical work day. There is something going on constantly. And uh, I'm usually, I'm working as an engineering manager at Experian, but I also have a sidekick called Zmei Research, which is uh, a company that uh, basically develops open source and open hardware products that I share uh, from my GitHub account. So, uh, what are my objectives for today? Uh, I want to get you interested in RISC-V. I want to make an overview about it, and I most definitely don't want to get you scared, uh, and I don't want to get into any sort of technical details, uh, because, well, there is a wealth of information in, on the internet about it. Whoever wishes to dig deep into it uh, can, can find it. Uh, you can contact me if you wish after the conference. Um, just uh, we can get it from there. But uh, so for today, just I just want to get you interested. And uh, why do I care about Risk Five? Uh, because at the first time I actually tried doing something with it, I got so excited that uh, for several days I was so hyped that uh, this was the only thing I cared about and the only thing I thought about. Uh, I do believe that there is a great potential in RISC-V and uh, I believe that it, it, it will be very interesting for other people to get to know more and uh, potentially use it in your products or in your solutions and so on. So uh, moving to the content of my presentation, uh, I want to share some definitions. Uh, so I'll start with with processor. So, uh, what is a processor? Uh, in today's engineering uh, world, where basically everything is uh, cloud-based or uh, everything is software-based, uh, we very often forget that uh, all the code, all the abstractions that we do and uh, basically every piece of software that we develop needs to be executed somewhere. And this somewhere boils down to something called a processor. It may be on a server, it may be in your laptop, it may be in some cloud data center, whatever, but it's, it's there, you cannot escape it. And uh, I also introduced the concept of microcontroller, which is somewhat related to a processor. And uh, it is actually a processor that does not require any or much uh, site uh, infrastructure to operate. So you may think of a microcontroller as a standalone processor that has everything that it needs integrated. So it has memory on board, it has different connectivity solutions like networking, like uh, sensors and so on. And uh, you find microcontrollers in everything. Basically every, every device that 
contains uh, electronics right now is based on a microcontroller. And also I'll introduce the concept of FPGAs. Uh, so FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Array and uh, it is a specific kind of uh, integrated circuit that is actually something like a blueprint. Uh, so you can actually use an FPGA to design your own system on it, uh, which, which is pretty cool because uh, that way you can customize what you're trying to achieve and uh, get very, very good results uh, in some areas like uh, efficiency, power consumption, performance and so on. And finally, the, the, my final definition is uh, that of an ASIC, which is an application-specific integrated circuit. So basically, uh, an ASIC is uh, a circuit, an, an integrated circuit that is produced by some manufacturer and you put it into your products. Uh, why these definitions are important, I'll get a little bit later on. So uh, you need to also be aware of the concept of RTL, which is Register Transfer Language, which uh, is actually a, a language that you use to describe uh, solutions that you develop on FPGAs, on ASICs, on microcontrollers and so on. So. Uh, Talking about risk 5 uh, I mentioned already that it's an instruction set architecture. So what exactly is an instruction set architecture? I'll use a metaphor from the software world mostly. Uh, it, it is not 100% correct, but it is quite close. So uh, it's, uh, you may think about it as the terms of an API. It's uh, a way that your solution talks to, to the underlying hardware. Uh, it basically describes what happens when you execute a particular command. Uh, and by particular command, I mean very low level commands, uh, assembly language and so on. Uh, so by definition, systems that, have, that share an instruction set architecture are interoperable and uh, you may migrate your software from one instruction set architecture, from one implementation of an instruction set architecture to another without having to redo the software, which is great because software is often the most important and time consuming part of uh, modern development. And um, ISA, uh, unified ISA gives us an opportunity to reuse, which is always great. So popular architectures, uh, Everybody is basically aware of Intel AMD x86 or x86-64 in the recent years. Uh, pretty much everybody has uh, some devices with an ARM architecture in our pockets because all modern smartphones use ARM processors. Uh, even ARM processors are finding their way into other fields right now. Uh, for example, Amazon is uh, trying to offer a cloud solution based on ARM processors and so on. But there are literally, literally thousands more of architectures like MIPS, PowerPC, etc. I'll not go get into many details. <coughs> and uh, probably the only thing that you need to be aware of is that uh, there are two schools of thought about uh, architectures, about processor architectures. Uh, one of them is called the, so the RISC and the other one is CISC. They stand for reduced instruction set and complex instruction set. Uh, historically, First, my first processors uh, were developed using uh, CISC methodology, so they contain a lot of uh, different instructions on the order of uh, hundreds, if not thousands, different instructions. Uh, and uh, they, they were designed in that way because um, back in the beginning of computing, we're talking 40s, 50s, 60s uh, of the previous century here, 
actually the most important thing in a computer was memory and uh, CISC allows you to to express your your program in less memory than RISC. Uh, RISC stands for reduced instruction set and uh, it actually provides a limited amount of uh, processor instruction, instructions, some going to extremes as a single instruction processor, which is an extreme case of risk, but it's nevertheless possible and usable. And uh, the, the, uh, the reason for designing processors in a risk way is that uh, you can actually simplify the design by omitting less uh, often used instructions. And by simplifying the design, you can get uh, you can get a higher performance uh, from a single core. You can get many cores from the same transistor budget. Uh, you can achieve higher frequency of your processor, and so on. Uh, it's actually there is a, a significant trade-off to both uh, both schools of thought. But uh, in the past, maybe 15 to 20 years. Uh, you can say that risk is uh, the predominant uh, concept. Uh, this is uh, actually a little bit strange because uh, probably the most prevalent architecture, x86, is a CISC one. But starting uh, from the early of 20, uh, 21st century, all modern x86 processors are actually uh, basically machines that uh, that translate uh, on the fly CISC to RISC instructions and it's a RISC core that uh, executes um, the very workload. So uh, with all that said, uh, an instruction set does not really matter anymore and uh, you can in, uh, you can use now uh, pretty much any instruction set that uh, gets the job done. Uh, why? Because most software today is uh, <coughs> is not um, it's not based it's not tied to a single computer. It's uh, it's something that is often cloud native or uh, distributed, and uh, if you have a significant uh, a sufficient layer of, uh, of abstraction, uh, you don't care what the instruction set is. So for example, if you write Python code, you don't care how the Python code is interpreted to the processor. But there are cases where uh, it, it actually makes sense to get to know your instruction set architecture and uh, to use something different based on on your use case and uh, today i'll try to under to explain some of the cases where that might be the case so uh what exactly is risk five and uh, quoting from their uh, portal it's uh, free and open source instruction set architecture which means that everybody can actually take it use it implement it change it in a way as you see fit and uh, this is actually pretty cool and it's uh, in stark contrast to pretty much all the rest of the infrastructure the architectures so you can you want to for example pro uh, produce an arm chip but you cannot because you can you should buy a license from arm and uh, there is no way around it and if you're a startup that has a pretty cool idea that uh, that requires uh, a processor of your own rather than something available off the shelf. Good luck talking to ARM. They will not care if you are not talking tens of millions of devices. So uh, I deviated a little bit, but uh, going back to Risk Five. Uh, it's actually a set of specifications uh, that uh, define different uh, interoperable processors. So you may have a 32-bit one, a 64-bit one. There's 
uh, provision for 128-bit processors, which nobody really cares about at the moment, but nevertheless the specification has it. And uh, the specification is flexible enough that uh, there are different uh, performance complexity and cost price points. Why uh, does that matter? Because uh, if you create a small device that uh, is on a constrained budget and uh, is battery powered and does not really need a lot of processing power, there is no point to, to have a powerful processor. However, if you want uh, to do some complex calculations, uh, you need that power and uh, <coughs> with it comes complexity and cost. And uh, the set was designed in such a way that uh, it's flexible enough to accommodate pretty much all the use cases. And uh, it, it is also designed in such a way that uh, it is very easy to extend uh, with, uh, with additional functionality to fit your use case uh, should you need it. So, uh, more importantly <coughs> than the before, there is a very good open source community around RISC-V that, uh, that provides uh, ready solutions, cores, um, even support, uh, commercial or free if you wish to. At the same time, uh, the RISC-V Foundation is backed by quite a lot of um, commercial vendors uh, which ensure that there is sufficient funding and uh, that there is some movement going on within it. <clears throat> and uh, finally, although it is commercially backed, uh, it is overseen by a non-profit organization which uh, basically serves as a guardian that everything that is uh, available as risk five remains open and accessible to everybody and that no single commercial entity can overtake uh, basically the specifications and also important is that there is a growing range of uh, actual implementations uh, of risk 5 that you can buy in and that you can use in your devices today should you wish to to just use something that is ready and available so uh, talking about implementations <coughs> uh, the typical use case for risk 5 is uh, implementing it in an fpga as i would already mentioned FPGA is a specific kind of integrated circuit that allows you to basically tailor it to execute your your design it's not code per se it's rather a description of your hardware and uh, most of the risk 5 implementations are indeed targeted at an FPGA so the risk 5 foundation github lists quite a lot of implementations uh, a lot of them are open source a lot of them are free to use there is there are also commercial ones and there are also ones that you can buy there are ones that are supported by uh, different vendors so i'll not go into much details there but for example uh, western digital has used risk 5 in in all their devices for the past i think six or seven years so if you have a western digital hard drive in your computer it's pretty much guaranteed that you you're using risk 5 and uh, western digital has been kind enough to provide uh, their designs as open source as well which is a great uh, opportunity for the community uh, my favorite one is uh, something called dark risk 5 which is uh, a very simple implementation um, the author claims that it was written in one single night of hacking which is quite interesting uh, it is so simple that i was able to to basically start extending it in less than a day and uh, it was a great experience for me to to actually get into the system this was my actually my first uh, risk 5 based uh, experience uh, there are solutions for a complete system on chip slash microcontroller that uh, are also open source 
there are ones that are commercially supported. Basically, it's pretty much given that um, whatever your use case is, uh, you may find something that, with, that fits it. And uh, there are also, <coughs> apart from FPGA implementations, uh, there are a number of semiconductor companies that uh, provide uh, RISC-V based processors already. The, probably the most important and the most uh, widely known company is uh, C5. Uh, this is a commercial company that, is, uh, that has been created by the same guys that created the specification in the first place. So they know their, uh, their job. But we also have NXP, uh, which is a very big semiconductor vendor. They were once part of Philips Semiconductor. We have all winner and a lot more and uh, pretty much every week there is a new processor coming to the market implementing risk 5 so it's a very busy space right now so uh, this is all good and great but why should you care about risk 5 uh, so uh, if you want to do something that uh, there is no uh, no suitable uh, processor or microcontroller for, you're pretty much out of luck. You need to um, to design your own. And uh, some cases are if you, for example, require uh, processing that is not uh, efficiently done in um, in a conventional way. So um, when when Bitcoin first uh, was first started gaining popularity, uh, it was solved on a CPU. It was horribly slow. Uh, then people started uh, using GPUs, which was hundreds of or even thousands times faster, but was still pretty slow. And uh, then there were FPGA implementations that were again several orders of magnitude faster than uh, using a GPU. And finally, we have uh, ASICs now that are, again, several orders faster than uh, FPGAs. So uh, let's say you have a great idea, you want to implement it, but uh, the processing power uh, is not sufficient. So what you can do is actually take uh, a RISC-V core, uh, create an accelerator uh, that is uh, attached to it and uh, use that accelerator to uh, pretty much solve the problem uh, in that is not possibly solved in any other way and uh, by having by doing that in an fpga you can start prototyping really fast because uh, there are ready solutions and uh, if you want you can move to an asic later on which is uh, pretty easy once you have the FPGA in place. And uh, I actually kind of covered my second point why uh, open source and open hardware are important, but uh, yeah, you get uh, an unmatched uh, flexibility that way. And uh, something related to it is actually future proofing. So um, I've used the recent semiconductor supply crisis in the automotive industry and uh, all this, the manufacturer, the car manufacturers are struggling right now to actually produce the cars that their customers want, except Tesla, who was able to basically switch from a number of, uh, of uh, semiconductors that they're using to something else in a matter of weeks. And uh, as I've previously worked in automotive, I can tell you that switching from one supplier to another is pretty hard if you, if you have not thought about it beforehand. Obviously, Tesla has done that and uh, they did good and all the rest are now following suit. So uh, basically having your design uh, on something like, like RISC-V allows you to to quickly adapt to changes, uh, to extend or scale down if needed your solution and it's uh, pretty m <coughs> a pretty efficient way to guarantee that uh, your design uh, will stay future proof and
and uh, last but not least uh, there is the also the security aspect so with all the recent uh, talk about security confidentiality and so on and all the the leaks that uh, that uh, different governments agencies companies individuals and so on are actually trying to uh, to gather more information about uh, our everyday lives uh, to the point of uh, basically rigging some of the hardware that we are using. Uh, it's uh, m more important than ever to be able to actually inspect and audit the systems that are mission critical for our lives. Uh, and uh, with using open source uh, hardware, you can do that to the basically to the transistor level. There, this is the only way that you can audit everything in your chain. Uh, of course, this is not a solution to everything. It is it it could be difficult, but there is no other way. So uh, this pretty much concludes the. Mm, the product level um, reasons why you should use open source, but uh, my favorite one is what I've said for last. So it's a great learning instrument. Uh, by by having by using uh, an open core with open subsystems and so on, I was able to learn so much about system engineering that it was eye-opening and. Uh, it is really it was really a great experience for me and it still continues to be so so if you want to just uh, learn something new something exciting then by all hands uh, start hacking on risk 5 you will not regret it and it's uh, very very easy to to start you don't need a huge amount of investment in neither hardware not your time so uh yeah, and you get the, your share amount of usual what the fuck moments as well. Apologies for the word. So, uh, some random facts that I wanted to throw at the, at the end of my presentation. I've used uh, Risk Five in two semi-commercial products that uh, I've designed so far. I really love it. Uh, I use semi-commercial because there are. I'm not making money out of them, but uh, they are actual devices that are out there and that our people are using and enjoying. Uh, there are uh, open source projects like uh, Symbifall that uh, allow you to use, uh, to have an open source toolchain from the very start to the very end of your implementation. And one of my des uh, designs is completely open source all the way. And uh, it actually makes me feel good. Uh, so uh, next random fact, if you want uh, to design an ASIC once you've prototyped on an FPGA, it's not that of the limits as I previously thought. So uh, most of the time when people think about, okay, uh, I cannot manufacture an integrated circuit on my own because it is too expensive. Well, it is not. Uh, so using, yeah, a node process like uh, 130 and 118 nanometers, which is something like 15 to 20 years old at that point, uh, allows you to actually go to something like uh, thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars, which is not that expensive for a company, even for an individual. Uh, yeah, of course, you will not get all the latest performance and all the latest functionality, but uh, it, you get a, something pretty functional for a small price. And uh, again, you can optimize it to fit your use case. So it is pretty much given that it will work okay for you. And uh, some predictions. Uh, I believe that in 10 years from now, RISC-V will be the platform of choice for, uh, for embedded smart IoT devices because it allows you to design great devices uh, without relying uh, on, on 
functionality that is not available anywhere else. You basically create your functionality that you require. And uh, I also think that in five years, uh, some of the big cloud guys, the so-called hyperscalers, uh, will create a uh, high performance uh, risk 5 chip that competes with uh, with the likes of intel arm ibm and so on and uh, my prediction is that this will be microsoft it's just a wild guess because uh, i don't i don't believe it will be google um, amazon is already working on a arm based uh, chip so i bet it will be microsoft and uh, just a highlight, a few days ago, um, it came to my attention that Apple is currently hiring a RISC-V engineer, so it may be something that Apple somehow is interested in too. I doubt that they will release uh, a RISC-V based computer anytime soon or an iPhone, but uh, they, for, they will probably use it for some support functionality as well. And uh, with that, I want to thank everybody. I'm open for questions and I want to share that this whole presentation is available as an open source, open license uh, material on my GitHub account. And I'll probably post a link after the, the talk in the Discord server. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ivan, for the talk. I believe it was very, very interesting to our hardware fans. We definitely needed the hardware talk. <laughs> uh, Thank you. So, yeah, we've got several questions in here. And the first one is, how do you decide digging into Risk Five? What was the catchy thing that you... Yeah, uh, so it was mostly by co coincidence. Um, I, I was designing uh, an audio product, uh, basically a glorified sound card, audio feel great, uh, that uh, required an FPGA to do signal processing. And at one point, uh, I saw that my design will require a processor inside the FPGA as well. Uh, in addition to the signal processing components. And uh, I started looking at the available processors, uh, the so-called soft cores, as is the term. And uh, well, basically I saw that there is something called RISC-V. It's open source. It fits my requirements that it was not significantly complex. Uh, it was, well, re uh, free to use. And uh, I started playing with it, and uh, in two days I was hooked about it. Yeah, I guess it was nicely documented otherwise. <laughs> uh, in fact, I jumped straight into the code of Dark Risk 5 on the premise that if it was written in one night, I will probably be able to understand it in one night as well, which was the case indeed. <laughs> yeah, emergency, I guess. Yeah. Uh, have you found some disadvantages of RISC-V? Uh, not really, but I've not used uh, RISC-V that much. I've used it in small projects and small products that do not really push the boundaries of uh, what is possible. Uh, so not, uh, not real disadvantages, but probably I'm not trying hard enough. Probably one of the disadvantages that I, I may hit sooner rather than later is a lack of commercial support, but it, it is pretty much uh, compensated by the great open source community that, uh, that is able to support you. In the end, it's better we have more advantages than disadvantages. So. Yeah, of course. All right. Um, have you tried something else than risk five as, as an alternative? Uh, before that, uh, several years before that, I've used uh, pre-configured uh, pre uh, soft cores from, uh, from Xilinx, which is one of the big uh, vendors of FPGAs. And uh, it, was, well, it was a good experience, but uh, you're pretty much uh, tied into the Xilinx ecosystem. And uh, this was something that uh, I wanted to avoid in that case. And a little bit off-topic question, but which is the electronic hack you're most proud of? Electronic hack? <laughs> or something hacky that you, you've done with all this hardware stuff? Ah, 
uh, talking about risk five or in general? Well, in general. well, uh, with risk five, I'm really proud of uh, that product that I mentioned, the glorified sound card. Uh, it is performing uh, at the level of uh, at the level that device costing tens of thousands of dollars are. Um, I have uh, friends that are in the audiophile community. I'm not an audiophile myself because I'm a little bit uh, tone deaf, but uh, they're very excited about um, the performance of that device. And uh, RISC V is not actually contributing to the sound characteristics of that device, but uh, but it is there. It is orchestrating basically the the other parts of the solution. got a little more time before our next lecture starts. As it's getting late, go and make some dinner, prepare it so uh, you're not hungry for the next one. See you later, guys. See you.